Visit us at Eduvo. Thank you for calling Eduvo. So this here is now a live recording of my connected iPhone. So now I want to launch the app on that iPhone. And once you connected your iPhone or your iPad to your Mac OS device, on that device, you should be prompted whether you want to um, trust the connected device. And you should, of course, choose yes there. And you should then be able to select your device here in Visual Studio Code in the bottom right corner by clicking on that bar as well. Now, I'm actually not able to choose it here. And if that's the case for you as well, you can also use Xcode, open that project again, which I showed you earlier. And then here in the drop down, select your device. And you can simply now launch the app on the real device here by clicking that play button. That also works and it will also build your app here and ship it onto that device. So let's wait for this build process to finish then. And here's the app launching up on my iPhone now. By the way, don't worry if that first launch takes a while. That only happens here because we're still having a development mode app, which is not optimized at all, which has a lot of overhead inside of it to speed up development. Now, this is the running app though. And just as on the Android device or on the simulator, of course, I can interact with it. Now, the look is the same as on the iOS simulator, of course, not adjusted to iOS for the reasons I explained. But the important thing is that we now also can test our application on the iOS device. And just as with real Android devices, of course, if you plan on shipping your app to the Apple App Store, you should also test the app on as many real iOS devices as possible.